Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, my name is Mary Beth, and I work at Vibrant Family Chiropractic. I am our office coordinator here. We are accepting new patients at this time. So if you are interested in taking a vitalistic chiropractic lifestyle approach to your health, definitely reach out to us and we can get you scheduled. Um, but let's go ahead and dive right in. So today we wanted to have a class on sleep because it's because it is one of those things that so many people need help with. Um, we have a lot of people, patients, just people in our day to day that we know mention that they need help with this really important piece of a healthy lifestyle. So you might wonder why is sleep important? There are so many important processes that happen every night when we're sleeping and particularly when we are reaching those deeper REM states of sleep. So organs get repaired during this time. You know, the body is healing during this time. Our brain actually detoxes during sleep and helps prevent things like potential Alzheimer's and dementia. Um, our memories that have been you know, gathered throughout that day sort of get sorted by the brain and it holds on to what it thinks is important to keep as long-term memories and sort of releases the things that it no longer sees to keep as important. Um, so even with like focus levels throughout the day, sleep can be a critical component of that happening. Um, sleep strengthens our immune system. Um, sleep is really important for blood sugar balance and not a lot of people know this. So I remember hearing of a study where if people got less than six hours of sleep for a week straight, they would more likely than not test as pre-diabetic. So getting that good, deep quality sleep even plays a role in what we feel like during the day, because of course we know when our blood sugar is stabilized, our mood is calmer, we're less irritable, and we're going to be healthier when we're regulating our blood sugar properly. Um, muscle recovery also happens at night. So if you are working out or would like to start working out, sleep is a critical time for those muscles that sort of endured a little bit of you know, stress in a workout. Um, when we're sleeping, that's when they're actually recovering and like long-term muscle strength and muscle building is happening. A lot of times we don't think about it while we're sleeping, but it's actually happening at that time. Um, hormone balance is also extremely important, and it's likely that the blood sugar regulation does play a role in that, though I'm sure it goes deeper and there are other things happening that impact our hormone balance as well. A lot of people also don't know, but probiotics are actually created by the body while we're sleeping. So of course we know we can eat probiotic foods and we can go buy high quality probiotic supplements, but you can also take advantage of your body's ability to make probiotics just by getting a good night's sleep. And again, that is going to help with our immune system being nice and strong, being less susceptible to things like infections and so on and so forth. So why do you think sleep is so overlooked. If you think about it, we see Instagram ads and, you know, just advertisements in general all the time for fitness programs, for diet programs, for supplements, but sleep is not talked about all that much. I believe it is because we cannot be sold good quality sleep. Can you be sold sleep, like being knocked out? Absolutely. Prescriptions do this every day for people. Um, however, the harm is that people think their problem has been solved because they are, again, being knocked out by the prescription sleep aid and they are asleep. But what they maybe have not been told or maybe they do not realize is prescription sleep aids actually keep you from getting into those deeper levels of sleep, like REM, REM state sleep which is where those important, you know, processes of repair actually happen. So that is, you know, one of the dangers that people don't realize when they are not approaching their sleep issues, again, from that holistic, from that vitalistic approach of like, let's get to the root cause and not just put a bandaid on this problem.
Uh, so how, okay, when it comes to how to improve sleep, it's important that we talk about two different common issues that people have with sleep. Most people fall into one of these two categories and sometimes they fall into both. So the first category is there are people that have trouble falling asleep. So they lay there in bed and they're replaying their whole day through their head, thinking of, okay, what email did I forget to send? Thinking of, you know, maybe an anxiety about the day ahead, um, you know, just kind of replaying in that, you know, cycle that your brain just like doesn't want to slow down, doesn't want to turn off and like relax and go into that, that state to be able to fall asleep. The other category is we have people that fall asleep sometimes very easily. And for reasons unknown to them, they wake up suddenly about three or four hours into sleep. They go from a deep sleep to suddenly being wide awake and almost even having like a little bit of an elevated heart rate. And they're suddenly just unable to fall back asleep. So I want to help you kind of pick apart what both of these things are and why they happen and what solutions would be. So for people that have trouble falling asleep, um, this is important for us to understand that they're probably people that have a lot of stress. You know, they probably have a very demanding job. Um, maybe it's even just emotional stress. It could be like relationships that are toxic that you have in your life. Whatever amount of stress, it is causing nervous system dysregulation. So there are two dominant states that our nervous system can be in. There is the sympathetic, which is known as rest and digest. This is the state that we should be in most of the time. This is the state where healing happens. This is the state where our hormones are staying balanced. And then this is the state that we need to be in to really fall asleep. The other state is the parasympathetic which you may have heard many times referred to as the fight or flight state, fight, flight, or freeze. It's called a few different things, but that is the parasympathetic. And that is where you know, cortisol is being produced, adrenaline is being produced, and it's this kind of hyperactive, focused, awake state that isn't harmful if it's only happening occasionally. Maybe you have a presentation at work and it, you know, gets you a little bit excited and nervous and you're getting into that state for, you know, 20 minutes before you go up and speak. Um, you know, traditionally it happened because we were maybe needing to, you know, throughout evolution, run from a bear. And so our body gives us this jolt of cortisol and adrenaline so that we can quickly do that. Um, and what we are sacrificing is that rest and digest state in that moment. So the body is choosing rather than prioritizing healing and digesting food, all energy is going to the ability to run away. So that's where those cortisol and adrenaline effects are coming from. So the problem with modern day society is we a lot of us have this nervous system dysregulation where we are in that fight or flight stage most of the time. And this is because of diet. This is because of, you know, just the environmental stresses that we put on ourselves every day. And really lifestyle is the best way. And I would argue, you know, the only way to really fix that and to be able to then, you know, let your head hit the pillow at night and just kind of like drift off to sleep. Um, chiropractic care and getting adjustments really helps with getting your body back into that parasympathetic, I'm sorry, sympathetic, out of the parasympathetic into that rest and digest state um, through the vagal nerve, which when we're getting adjustments, it's helping the body actually, you know, switch back into that rest and digest state, keeps us more relaxed. And that's why most people that have, you know, an adjustment will tell you if they're getting a great adjustment with a great chiropractor, they will notice that they will sleep noticeably better that night. Um, also like other ways that you could help your body get out of that fight or flight and into that rest and digest is having a high quality bedtime routine. 
So instead of being the kind of person that knows like, okay, I have to fall asleep right at 10 o'clock to get my however many hours of sleep I need to wake up tomorrow morning. Um, instead of being the kind of person that, you know, is scrolling on their phone, watching a movie, maybe watching something that's like really stimulating and like violent or just like really busy and then like going to bed right at the time that they need to immediately fall asleep. Um, I definitely advocate for having like a nighttime routine that maybe starts at least an hour before you actually need to fall asleep. And this might look like doing a guided meditation. This might look like prayer. This might look like putting on, you know, some relaxing classical music or nature sounds, dimming the lights, which we'll talk about light is also very important. Um, just kind of creating an atmosphere, maybe moving out of your living room into your bedroom, you know, pulling out a good book to read, just anything that signals to your body and your brain, like we're relaxing now, right? Getting off of our phones is so important. And again, we'll talk about that with the light, but even just if you're the kind of person that's always getting text messages from people, from friends, either silencing your phone, you know, putting it on airplane mode, maybe leaving it in a different room altogether is going to help your nervous system really move into that state you need to be in in order to relax and fall asleep. Um, supplements can also help. And of course, when we're talking about supplements and we're talking about sleep, the first one most people think of is melatonin. And I will tell you that, sure, there's a time and a place for everything, but melatonin is literally at the bottom of my list of what I recommend when it comes to sleep. And the reason is because melatonin is a hormone. Melatonin is a hormone that you produce. And if you're consuming melatonin in a supplement, chances are it's not a natural version as some natural versions of melatonin are present in things like tart cherry juice. Um, most melatonin that is consumed is synthetic. And if you take it every single night and you take it consistently, your body's own production is going to downregulate and you're going to make less of it and you're going to be more dependent on melatonin. And I've heard this time and time again. Um, I used to manage like a supplement section in a health food store and people would come in and they'd say, oh, I've been taking melatonin for years, but I feel like, you know, every few months I have to work up you know, my dose on how much I'm taking. And I still struggle to sleep if I'm not consistently increasing my dose, which is why you'll see doses as high as 10 milligrams when your brain can really only process about 0.3 milligrams at a time. And so what I would recommend instead of melatonin is magnesium. Uh, magnesium is a mineral that we require. And a lot of us are really low in magnesium because our soil is depleted. Uh, a lot of people have gut health issues, so they're not even absorbing all of the magnesium from their food. And again, because so many people have chronic stress, our body rapidly uses up our magnesium stores when we're stressed out. So because of modern day society and the you know, chronic stress that's prevalent in our lives, we already need more magnesium more than likely than our ancestors needed. And yet again, our soil's depleted, our gut health is off, and we're probably actually absorbing even less than they had. So we actually carry magnesium glycinate is um, like one of the best forms. And we do carry one in the office. If you wanted to swing by and pick one up, just let us know so we can make sure that we have enough stock here. We can special order it. Um, so as of right now, for the next 24 hours, if you let us know that you want one, because of this class, we'll honor a 5% off, which brings it down to, I thought I wrote it down, is around $25. I think it was 24 and some change. Um, so magnesium glycinate is wonderful. I also love herbs. Um, so there are a lot of different herbs you can use for just relaxing the body, even throughout the day. There are gentle ones, and then there are ones that are stronger for people that really struggle with getting to sleep. And you can't really 
you know, you can't really get dependent on using herbal medicine the way that you can using a hormone like melatonin. So I love lemon balm. Um, you can make a tea or get a tincture or get a capsule of lemon balm. Lavender, which we all know, I know a lot of people even like just using the essential oil of lavender. You can, you know, put a few drops on your pillow or rub lavender oil mixed with something like coconut oil on the bottom of your feet, which is um, an, a place that the body can easily absorb it into the system to help you relax. Um, I love chamomile. In fact, one of my favorite teas is there's a wonderful brand called Traditional Medicinals. They are all organic, herbal only teas. I think, yeah, they may have one or two that has green tea, but I don't know if I've ever seen one. I think all of their teas, if not 99% of them, would be caffeine free because they are herbs. So they are organic, all herbal, and actually made and formulated by herbalists. You can turn the box of tea on its side to look at like the, where the nutrition facts would be. And they actually label how many milligrams of whatever herb is in one serving, which is really nice too. So they have one that is, they have a handful that I would recommend for sleep. But my favorite one that I know right off the top of my head is they have a lavender chamomile tea. And I will just, you know, make a, a hot cup of that. And it's delicious on its own. I don't take mine with honey because I like the way it tastes just on its own. But you could certainly add a little bit of honey if you preferred it that way. I like to put a lemon slice in mine and it's delicious. Um, so next, like we were talking about, there are the people that have trouble falling asleep. And those are the people that we were mentioning need help with their nighttime routine, need help shutting off, you know, the stressed out state of mind that they're in. And then, as I mentioned, there are the people that have trouble staying asleep. So this is a little bit of a different issue. The reason that this happens is because we are fasting the whole time we're sleeping, right? Like we're not consuming food. And a really healthy body that balances blood sugar really well, tolerates, you know, long fasts without food and unhealthy bodies don't do that very well. So if you are not consuming enough calories during the day, if you are not getting enough protein, if you are not getting enough minerals, if you are not getting enough fat, if you are not eating high quality nutrient dense foods often enough throughout the day to regulate your blood sugar, what happens is, yeah, you fall asleep very easily because, you know, relaxation, you know, mentally is not, you know, maybe a problem for you. And then what happens is about three or four hours into that, your body is running out of the stored glycogen in the liver that's allowing us to, you know, fast for eight plus hours. And what happens is our blood sugar actually drops. And when our blood sugar drops, what happens is our cortisol and adrenaline skyrockets. And so what happens is, is that is why people will tend to say like deep asleep. And then all of a sudden I am suddenly awake and so awake that I can't relax. I can't go back to sleep. So for people with that issue, what we recommend is that you do look at what your food intake looks like throughout the day. Are you getting enough stable traditional saturated fat like coconut oil, like ghee or grass fed butter, like, you know, olive oil rather than the unstable processed seed oils that don't help with blood sugar balance. Are you getting enough protein? Are you getting enough calories? This is when it is really important to kind of track your food throughout the day to make sure you're meeting your requirements. And magnesium, as I mentioned, can be helpful for falling asleep. Magnesium can also be helpful for staying asleep because out of the many things that it does for the body that's so amazing, blood sugar regulation is one of them. So again, magnesium is going to calm you down and relax you and help you fall asleep. And then it is also going to help you regulate 
your blood sugar while you're sleeping so that you're less likely to wake up in the middle of the night. Um, yeah, so after that, I wanted to also mention, um, oh, 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 before we move on, um, we know that it's not ideal to eat a really big meal right before we go to bed, because if we have a really big meal on our stomach, you know, our body needs to be digesting and then we aren't able to fall asleep. We aren't able to sleep really well. So most people have heard, you know, it's good to have maybe your big, your, your small, whatever size, like medium to, you know, decent sized dinner, at least three hours before bed. However, if you are one of those people that is having trouble staying asleep and you are waking up, you might benefit at least temporarily from having a small bedtime snack. And I'm not talking about, you know, anything processed. I'm not talking about, you know, anything that would be unhealthy. I'm not, of course, encouraging you to have a cupcake before bed that would not help your blood sugar at all. But instead, you want to think of something small that has a little bit of protein, a little bit of fat, and a little bit of a healthy carbohydrate to then, again, help you be able to tolerate that eight hour fast. So you could have like some bone broth, um, like a cup of bone broth with maybe some like chopped up fruit and veggies on the side, just like a little bit. You could have, um, you know, maybe, maybe you want to have a piece of fruit, like an apple or a banana, and you have a little bit of nut butter with it again, because like a little bit of almond butter is going to have some protein and fat along with the carb of the apple to give you those things that you need to balance your blood sugar while you're sleeping. Um, my favorite little trick that I like to make is I call it coconut fudge. So coconut oil, you know, is really healthy for us. It's actually really good for our brain and um, can definitely help regulate our blood sugar so that we can get a great night's sleep. So what I like to do is I go buy what's called coconut butter, which is like coconut oil, but they leave the fiber of the coconut in there. So it's really thick and has this really nice like hearty spread it's a lot like a like the texture of a nut butter but it's coconut and what i'll do is i will pour that into a pan and just like you would you would if you're making fudge and i will take my favorite protein powder mine is actually collagen we uh, max living has a really great collagen you can get and i will take like a few scoops and i will stir that in it's good just like that, but if you wanted, you could add just like a tablespoon of honey to that whole mixture, adds a little bit of sweetness and then a little bit of salt. And you mix all of that in to a pan, let it settle, you know, score it so it looks like fudge. And what's very quick to digest and won't keep you digesting food all night while you're sleeping is if you have one or two of those little pieces of like protein coconut fudge right before bed and have like a nice cup of herbal tea along with it. Um, so that, you know, you've got the saturated fat, the coconut that's gonna balance your blood sugar, the protein that's gonna help balance your blood sugar, the little bit of carbohydrate, if you even wanna put it in there from the honey and a good quality sea salt because sea salt helps to calm the adrenals, it has minerals and it helps um, further with that blood sugar balance. So lastly, the thing that I want to talk about is light. So as we mentioned, melatonin is a hormone. Cortisol is a hormone. And light, the lights around us, artificial lights, natural lights, actually affect which of those hormones are being produced in the body. So early in the day, in the atmosphere, you know, out in the, you know, in, in nature. Um, in the morning, there is a lot of blue light. Blue light stimulates cortisol production, which at the right times in the right amounts is not bad. Cortisol actually helps us wake up, get motivated, get moving, have energy. It's early in the day. What are we going to do? Where are we going to go? But then of course, the body would not be healthy if we were in that state of high energy all the time. So what happens is in the late afternoon, the blue light is coming down in the atmosphere. And what we then start to see is an increase of orange and red light. And that is triggering the body's melatonin production. 
Um, so that's what the red light that we see outside is what is, you know, at a sunset, think about it. You're like at a sunset, that golden hour that we know, like we, everything kind of has that pretty yellowish orange tint to it. That is actually stimulating the body's melatonin production. So those, you know, the lights, the natural lighting throughout the day plays um, a, the direct role in creating our circadian rhythm. And our circadian rhythm is so off because most of us are inside all of the time. And we are getting a lot of blue light, not just in the morning, but all day long from all of our you know, electronic devices. So that is actually hindering your melatonin production. And so again, you know, why take melatonin if you can and should be making melatonin? So some things that you can do are getting outside more. Um, believe it or not, even getting out early or in the middle of the day helps your brain know what time it is. So it knows what time you should be producing melatonin. So even if you're getting daylight exposure early in the day, when that blue light is out there that's helping energize you, it's helping your brain understand what your internal you know, clock should be, what your biological rhythm should be. So it knows, okay, this many hours from now, we're gonna be producing melatonin. Another really big thing you can do is be mindful of your screen time. So if it's getting later in the day, if it's you know, sunset, sundown, you know, after, after the sun goes down, you really wanna be mindful of how much you're on electronic devices and use the red and orange filters they have. I have an iPhone and there's a way in your settings you can actually go in and create this red screen. And so like when the sun goes down or maybe even a little bit earlier in the day, I will like do the triple click and it will go over to a red screen. And if you were to see this during the day, it's a little bit hard to read, but when it's dark, you actually realize like, oh, I can read this really well because my eyes have adjusted. You can also get amber glasses um i got these on amazon they were pretty inexpensive and it's like a one-time purchase you know you don't have to like get you know anything after you have them um raw optics like ra optics they make really high quality um sleep lenses i know a lot of people in the health world like swear by them but again i was just kind of wanting to try it out for the first time so i got these on amazon um, also, there is red light therapy, so you can look up getting a red light device to actually like put in your room, um, using more candlelight, just literally just dimming the lights in your house at the end of the day can make such a big impact on your ability to relax, your body's ability to make melatonin, and then your ability to fall asleep. So that really wraps up everything that i wanted to cover with you all today again my name is mary beth i'm the office coordinator here at vibrant family chiropractic we believe in taking a chiropractic lifestyle approach a vitalistic approach and helping you get to the root cause of why you're not able to live your best and healthiest life so if you are already a patient definitely reach out to us and if you have any questions, just comment them below. Um, if they are pertaining to you as an individual, we are gonna suggest that you come in and you know, talk to us in person, but I'll do my best to answer any questions you might have. And just as a reminder, in the next 24 hours, if you let us know if you're interested in getting magnesium and coming and picking it up at our health center, we will honor that 5% off, which brings it down. Like I said, it's $24 and a little bit of change. So we'll just call it like 25 even, something around there. Um, so thank you so much for joining us. Um, I hope that you, you know, learned a lot and gained some actionable tips. And um, yeah, thank you for your time. Have a wonderful day.